Hey tribe of journeymen and women. So today I have an unusual subject, but a very intriguing one. And I think you'll find it super valuable because first of all, I'm gonna talk about some secrets of YouTube based on my own experience and some of the new challenges I'm facing. Uh, I'm kind of in a very interesting situation because right now I'm running two channels. I recently started a second YouTube channel. And the first one has over 125,000 subscribers, which I think is a significant number. Uh, to a degree, it's also significant because uh, I changed the subject of it a few times, which is bad practice on YouTube. Usually you shouldn't do it, but there were good reasons for me to do it. Uh, I'm pretty sure I would have even more subscribers if I would have done that, uh, if I wouldn't have changed subjects once in a while. And also, uh, if, if having subscribers was my main goal, which wasn't, my, my main goal was to deliver certain messages. Uh, if it was the other way, there would be even more subscribers, but 125,000, it's a significant number. It usually means like, you know, you kind of made the first big step on YouTube and you, you can consider yourself a YouTuber, I guess. Although personally, I consider someone to be a YouTuber when you reach 100, not sorry not when you reach 100,000 uh, subscribers but when you earn your finances uh, from youtube when when youtube is your primary source of income uh, which is my case i'm living off of youtube uh, when that's the case then i think you can consider yourself a youtuber it's not when it's not when you are I'm going on this actually bridge where hopefully i won't fall in but maybe we'll just sit here for a moment so, uh, but yeah, uh, you know, if you're just like, you have like 20,000 subscribers, which is great, but, but no, you're not earning any money and you're just kind of posting videos and not so many people care, but you care about it. And then you're like, I'm a YouTuber. I don't think so. I think personally for me, a YouTuber is a person who earns his money primarily from YouTube, but you know, it's a whole discussion. Now, the thing is, uh, so I had that experience of running my own channel, living off of it which uh, in, to a degree I'll share some parts of it. Uh, but also recently I started a second channel. And when I started the second channel, I, um, I bumped into some issues because I thought, you know, I know the game of YouTube very well from my first channel and I'm just gonna make it happen in day one that as soon as I'm gonna start my second channel, it's just gonna take off. It didn't. And then I, I was caught off guard and I thought, shit so 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 i had to kind of re-remember what made my first channel work and and a lot of the things you know i learned a lot of lessons on youtube which are universal i could apply them again in my life i'm applying them again on the second channel but there were some there were some missing pieces i felt like there's something i'm doing wrong which i think in general is is a, is a powerful tendency of kind of way of acting is when you take when you when you experience difficulties you're not just doing the same and expecting different results that actually also uh, connects to one of my favorite quotes which apparently einstein is you know said that he's he's responsible for this quote that einstein defined that insanity or madness is doing the same thing and expecting different results and some people they're like you know, they're, they're hard-headed and they're like, I'm just going to keep doing the same thing and eventually I'm going to make it. I think that's not really the case. Uh, perseverance and hard work, which we're going to talk about today, it's crucial, it's very important, but it's not just about that. Uh, you also have to see what you're doing wrong and always constantly learn from your mistakes. You always have to question, what else can I do better? Where can I improve on? Or what worked? and what I can repeat and what didn't work and what I can, you know, uh, change. So that being said, uh, what happened to me is when I started to see that my second channel is not picking up the way I expected it to, I started questioning. So what am I doing wrong? What's the lacking part? And that brought me to search for answers from experts, which I personally think is one of the best ways to go about things something sometimes we forget and sometimes I forget myself, is when you lack certain information, you're not sure what's the problem, a great way to go about it is to find the person who's considered to be the best at that subject 
and see what solutions he's suggesting, he's offering, kind of to gather the missing intelligence. I used to do that in the past many times, opening my dojo, starting my first YouTube channel, but I felt I bumped into that wall again. And, and that's where, first of all, I discovered Seth Godin, uh, and he's great, I love him. Uh, considered to be like the best marketing expert in the world. But then the second person I bumped into was uh, Gary Vaverchek. I hope I'm pronouncing the surname right, especially if Gary's watching. Holy shit, I don't wanna fuck this up. So, uh, but Gary V, that's the simple way of saying that's, that's how he introduces himself. So he's considered to be the uh, best expert in the world for social media, which includes YouTube, but doesn't stop at it. And I bumped into his first book. I think it's his first book. It's called Crush It. I'm going to talk about it in this video, but I already want to say, go and read it. If you're, if you're, if you want to be an influencer, if you want to create a YouTube channel, Instagram, podcast, whatever, go read the book. It's, it's, it's brilliant. I, I read a bunch of books about social media marketing, marketing, etc. There's nothing like it, nothing else. Some of the information is the same, you know, like, like there's universal principles, but his approach to it and certain things he says, you know, he's very, what I appreciate about Gary, he's very blunt. He's very direct. He doesn't screw around and he doesn't put out fluffy things to make you feel good. He, he, first of all, one of the biggest lessons that he says, which I wanted to make sure I stress in this video is the importance of hard work, of grinding, especially these days, because the, the market is so saturated that, that if, unless you're ready to grind, then you're not going to make it. And I really appreciate that message because I think it's absolutely true. And for me, grinding was never a problem. I'm a bit of a workaholic myself. I like to, to do the work I like to do. I don't have a problem motivating myself to, to make my videos. But uh, some people do. And I think that's, that's the need to hear that message. But also, even for myself, it was important to remember that when I started the second channel and I, I started having those difficulties, it was difficult to, to get things to pick up, um, hearing V, Gary V saying that, you know, un un until you publish, and I'm quoting him more or less, until you publish 50 videos, you can't know if you're in the right direction or not. Like it's too early to decide. It's only at least after you finish publish 50 videos, then you can look and be like, oh, okay, this is going well, or this is not going well. And even then it's still early. Until you put in a year, two years, three years of hard work, you shouldn't panic. And I think that's what we do. That's what a lot of us do. And, and that's what I did for a moment with my new channel, The Journey. Um, I put out some videos and I was so used to my quote unquote fame. And I was so used to uh, my main channel having that initial, or not initial, I mean eventual popularity that if I would even put out a okay, decent video at best, I know that at least a thousand people will watch it and they'll comment. And here I am with my new channel and putting out a video and nobody comments. And there's like 20 views, 50 views. I'm like, holy crap, you know, what's happening? And then in the beginning, when I, when I started the Martial Arts Journey channel, my main channel with 100,000 subscribers, uh, reading the book of Gary Vee, reading Crush It, and reflecting back about what I did right and what I did wrong with the Martial Arts Journey, I remembered that actually the grind definitely happened there as well. Like the success didn't come quick. And, and that's kind of the, one of the things we are, we sometimes uh, fuck up with is when we, um, when we, when we reach a certain level of success, we start to feel like uh, that always was like that. We kind of start to forget that shit wasn't easy, you know, back in the day that I had to put a lot of work. And I kind of got used to having those subscribers, that interest from people. And when I published a new video on the new channel and barely anyone cared, I also made a few other major mistakes of, <laughs> you know, announcing my new direction in a bit of a shocking way. And I kind of demotivated people in, in following that. Long story, if you weren't involved in that. But so I did other mistakes too, but, but then still not a few, very few people cared about my new, new videos initially. And and then I, I was felt like, holy crap, what's wrong? You know, what am I doing wrong? And part of it was, it takes time. You know, 
You need to grind it out. You should not panic until, you know, a, a while you're, uh, until you're a while, a while into it. And, and one of the lessons and uh, messages I appreciated most from Gary Vee from reading his book was the idea of, um, I actually need to check my audio. Sometimes it stops and I don't want that to happen. It's all good. Sorry. So one of the main messages I appreciate from Gary Vee is uh, that you should put the blinders on. That's, that's how he specifically says it. It's kind of a quote from him. That you should put the blinders on and you shouldn't care whether you're getting a thousand views or 10,000 views or whether people are loving it or not. In the beginning, that's not the point. And even later, it's not the point. I think, I think we resonate here with Gary. It's that um, I know from my own experience, and I've did that mistake way too many times in starting various projects outside of YouTube, as much as on YouTube. You know, you put out a video, you put out two videos, you put out three videos, and nobody seems to care. And then you, because those three videos didn't have what you consider to be success, you didn't have a lot of views, you start to go into panic mode and you decide, ah, oh, shit, that means nobody cares, this is bad videos, this is bad, that, the bad direction, I should drop it. But the message is, it's too early. It's not a time to panic. Initially, it doesn't matter how many people watch it. Until you put in enough of a grind, uh, you can't really know whether you're on the right path or not. And I realized I'm kind of making that mistake with the journey. And listening to Gary Vee, hearing him say that, I kind of put the blinders on. I was like, you know what? I trust my direction. I trust my intuition. I know I will make, make mistakes. I know I will learn from them. But also too, I just need to put on the blinders and just go ahead and keep publishing videos. And eventually, you know, things will take off. I, I deep inside, I know it. I trust it. It doesn't mean I didn't have doubts on the way, but, but I trusted that deeper voice, that intuition. And now I'm sitting here on this thing next to my parents' place, which I'm visiting. And now I'm starting to see great signs of success. Like some of the videos are starting to take off. I'm like, holy crap, this is amazing. I'm so happy, you know. But, but it, but, and I'm lucky, you know, because I, I, I kind of found the right answers. I'm still sure I'm going to bump into huge walls, which are going to discourage me. And then I will have to overcome them again. But uh, I'm lucky that I had, I have already a lot of knowledge about how YouTube works and I have some shit to offer, some good shit. And also I have people who know me, you know, because of my main channel, I can, people are still, it's still easier for me to attract viewers to my videos because there's a certain relationship already developed. Although I still need to re-earn their trust, I do have that luxury of already having some establishment on online media. But, uh, but it, so, so my grinding was fairly short and I still will continue to grind, don't worry. But, but it took me like, today is what, April 20th or something like that. So that means, and I started my new channel uh, pretty much right after New Year's. So it took me like four and a half months to get the initial signs of success. But those four months and a half, I keep saying that, but they were rough. I was not getting the views I, I was expecting and, and, and I got a lot of criticism and I, I started to doubt myself and feel like, oh crap, maybe I'm doing something wrong. And then again, listening to Gary Vee, I was like, crap, no, no. Keep it together, Rokas, keep pushing it. You're gonna make it. And I'm lucky it took me only four and a half months to kind of get that initial success where I'm like, oh, okay, I see that this is working. But also too, there was, there was, there's some wisdom from my past YouTube experience where I'm able to recognize those small levels of success. There's a bunch of people whom I would show and be like, oh, look, this video got 500 views. And they're like, Rokas, you're gonna make a living out of it. It's only 500 views. I'm like, no, no, you don't get it. This is a significant success. So not everyone will agree with me, but I know what I'm talking about. I've been through that path. Anyway, sorry, kind of went on a tangent here. I wanna make sure I keep it on subject. And let's get back to Gary Vee, which the video is supposed to be about. So, so that's that's the first lesson. That's a huge thing I, I, that Gary Vee reminded me, and that's kind of the message I really want to say to everyone. You know, don't worry about the numbers, don't worry about the initial failures, put on the blinders, and keep working. 
And if you're going to read the book, you'll learn more about how he presents that. But that's a powerful message which everyone should hear. That un until you try for a long time working your ass off like crazy, you cannot say that, you know, oh, nobody cares. Uh, but coming back to the general story, uh, so I read the book, Crush It. And then also there's a second book, I guess it's the second book, called Crushing It, which he published later. And that's the, I listened to the audiobook, which is really cool because he would make live comments as he was reading the book, which is packed with stories of people applying Gary Vee's suggestions and, and making it work through hard ass work. <laughs> uh, and also he kind of reflects about the what new lessons he learned and kind of summarizing what he presented in the past. So it's a really nice book. Again, I, I highly recommend reading that as well or listening to an audiobook version. But that aside, one of the key lessons and discoveries I made listening to Gary Vee's second book, uh, and it was it was an interesting moment because uh, in his first book, and that's, that was written like before social media exploded. So obviously there were some moments which were difficult to know what's going to happen in the, in the future. And there's a moment where he says that you need to become the, the best possible expert of whatever content you're going to share. And I kind of felt like I tripped there. I slipped. I was like, I was reading that actually in the middle of the night. Uh, my girlfriend was already uh, asleep next to me and I couldn't sleep because I was, I was going through that mind journey of, oh, fuck, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? I need some information. And I already had crush it. And I, I woke up in the middle of the night. I started reading it to, to search for answers. And that was the phrase I, I read, that you need to be the best possible expert of the niche that you're going to cover. And for a moment, I thought, shit, that's not my case, especially with the journey. You know, I want to change the world and I want to have huge positive impact and yada, yada. But I'm like, I'm not the best motivational guide. I don't know how motivation works better than anyone else. And, uh, you know, I'm not like the most inspiring person, the period. There's like, I'm not the, the best expert of the subject I want to cover. And that made me think, and that made me go even down a, a deeper rabbit hole of realizing, crap, I need to start, you know, working my ass off, not only in producing content, but also in re-educating myself in the subjects that I want to cover online. So that kind of made me feel good about realizing, well, I can still do it. I can still work my ass off and become an expert at something else that I'm not yet at. But also I look back at my journey and um, I remembered initially the martial arts journey channel. I started as, I started as an Aikido expert and um, I was making tutorials and I did a great job. I was, I was presenting it in a way like no one else did at the day. I was more human, I was more casual because in Aikido and martial arts used to do, people are very kind of strict, tend to be strict and, and, and very formal. And I was just casual, I was caring, and I think people took it up. And also I started with a very specific realm, which was, I was very good at, that's a kemi, uh, safe falling. I was very good at breaking it down and demonstrating it better than most Aikido instructors, I guess, at the time and I was putting it out uh, online. And, and, and I was lucky in, in that way I found a niche, which is a super important subject as well. I'm not sure if I'm gonna to touch that, but niche, super important. Gary Vee talks about that too. So you choose a very specific niche that you're, and you become the best expert possible. So I did that in my martial arts journey. That's how my channel, my Aikido channel became one of the three biggest Aikido channels in the world before I dropped Aikido and moved on to the next thing. But, uh, so I resonated with that. I saw the truth in it, but also, uh, I did something else. Thus the name, the journey or martial arts journey, which eventually the name of the day wasn't that it eventually became that, but that reflected the process very well because as soon as I dropped Aikido and I started exploring martial arts and questioning them publicly documenting my journey of rediscovering martial arts and critical thinking in martial arts, uh, the troublesome part was that I was not an expert of anything, you know? And so that kind of conflicted with what Gary Vee said. Now, the funny part is Gary Vee in his first book, Crush It, 
he mentions it with one sentence by saying, well, but if you're not an expert, you can document your journey of becoming one. That's an option. And that's it. And I was like, that sentence, I was like, oh, that's what I did. And I was surprised. I was like, that's interesting. He only gave one sentence to this. Now, my whole channel was based on that. But then funny enough, if you read the books, you know what I'm talking about. In Crushing It, in his second book, he actually, um, he actually uh, says that specifically. He's like, I can't believe looking back that I only said one sentence about that because the, he makes a whole chapter about that, that especially these days on social media, you don't have to be an expert from the get go. That your journey of becoming an expert, you still have to make it interesting and engaging, but that can be valuable content on itself, which is exactly what I did with my martial arts journey of being a no one at combat sports and eventually meeting some of the top people in the world of that subject of eventually having my first mixed martial arts fight, traveling to the States and Ireland just because of that and, and devoting myself to training. And, and that whole journey was fascinating and people appreciate it. People saw the transformation I went through from the first time I sparred an enemy fighter and my ass got kicked to me sparring again with him three years later where I actually stood my ground. And that was a huge inspiration to people apparently on comments, based on comments. <laughs> And um, so I, I did what Gary Vee only briefly mentioned in his first book, and then he gave a whole chapter in Crushing It. And that made me reflect again and made me ask myself, well, shit, maybe I don't necessarily have to be an expert from the get-go to cover this subject, to cover this realm, that my journey, thus the journey, might be as valuable as well. It may take longer to pick up and get people's interest, but, but there may be value in me documenting my path to trying to make the world better. And you know, my struggles and what works and what doesn't work. And I trust that years later, we will look back at this and be like, holy crap, you know, Rokas didn't know what the fuck he's doing in the beginning, but, but he believed himself, he worked his ass off, and now we have this, you know? <laughs> Maybe this is, maybe you're watching this video years later. Maybe this is like 2030 and you're like, oh crap, Rogus was in this spot on this weird bridge and, you know, and, and now he's here. And so you can see the whole journey, which is fascinating. And that's part of what I'm betting my, my energy on is documenting my journey of becoming an expert of the direction I want to move into. But coming back to Gary Vee, I appreciate that he specifically said that he introduced that subject because that encouraged my thinking again. Based on my experience, direct experience of creating a successful YouTube channel, uh, I knew that he's right. I was an expert of a field and I was able to cover a niche and make it big. And then I devoted myself to documenting my journey and that became a big thing. So I know those both paths work and now hearing him say that, I know that that's exactly what I can do with the journey. So I think those are the main lessons I learned. There's so much good stuff there out there. Go and read those books. Don't hesitate. Uh, just, yeah, whatever you're going to do, I think it's worth reading them, even if you're not going to do social media. But yeah, and just kind of summarizing for a quick brief moment of where am I now? So, and where are those explorations and thoughts from reading Gary Vee? Uh, what I kind of came to, to realize is, well, actually there's a couple more things <laughs> and I'll just quickly mention them because they're valuable. And this is, and I think our life is all about providing value to each other. So one thing that I enjoyed him reinforcing again, it's something I discovered myself before, but hearing him say that, I felt like, shit, I need to own this even more. One was being authentic. And, and I resonated with him on the level where, you know, some people try to make their videos perfect. And I think it's not about that. And he mentions in his first book that he doesn't think it's about that either. Uh, where it's what matters more is that you care about what you do. What matters more is that you really care about giving something valuable to people. That's number one. And that's something I really resonate with. But then our society keeps explaining to us that oh no, it's all about you know money and giving value secondary. You kind of first 
need to make sure that this is financially going to work out and only then you you provide value and you don't give too much and blah blah and, and i like his perspective and that's kind of how i'd like to function as well where first of all no you just give everything possible the most value you can you can you provide everything and just give it away eventually the money will come that was my experience in the past and hearing him say that that reinforced it in me again and led me on a journey to 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 just not worry about the financial side of course i do take care of my finances you know and i make my money still from marta's journey and from some editing work so i make sure that i'm not starving you know but but i'm not worried about making money it's not a primary focus first of all i'm, I'm all about giving value and hearing him say that him reinforcing that in, in various stories from the second book that if you focus all about providing value that eventually it's going to work out um it was great to hear that that kind of again reinforced my way of functioning and and made me go even more for this road that i'm going to and kind of led me to creating those first bigger successful videos um and yeah the coming back to the casual not necessarily casualness maybe it's more about um just being focused more on on providing value and caring and being yourself than trying to make a perfect video which i hate i don't like making perfect videos and that kind of inspired me as well with a few other things that happened in my life but 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 that was one of the parts key parts where i realized you know i can make these one take videos and i can sit here on this weird bridge thing with you guys you know just chill by the lake and talk about life and and that's that's as good as that's even better you know than than making some fancy ass video in the studio scripted and and polished and what not the main point is not that and it's good to to kind of reinforce that idea yeah so i think there there was one more thing i wanted to say just i lost it somewhere in my mind so so uh but i'll just kind of summarize the whole thing and and give you some more tips if you're interested in doing youtube or whatever and i think uh, since we're kind of ending our conversation i'm going to slowly head back home to my parents take you through this wonderful neighborhood so yeah so uh read the book it's a great book it tells a lot of truth and uh, personally reflecting like like my final takeaways from it is work your ass off put the blinders on focus mainly on caring don't try to make things perfect and I'll probably make a specific video about that but it's a general super important idea that I that I, I'm just protecting from the wind super important idea that I I I keep reminding myself and others is if you try to make something perfect and that's obviously you know I may be wrong on some levels but but that's my experience that if you try to make something perfect it becomes hard because because you can kind of demotivate yourself thinking oh I need this and that and eventually you don't do it at all it's better just do it well enough just do an okay job but just keep on going eventually you will improve eventually you will become better and that perfection your 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 mediocrity what what's going to be like just a regular video for you with practice it will become way better than someone's perfect so you know don't try to make things perfect just just go and do things publish it don't worry about the views focus on giving value and yeah i think that's what's going to work out and and that's uh, final words that's exactly what worked out for me or is working out i asked myself what's the main value i can give as honestly as i can what's the unique experience that i can share that no one else can share and that that made me remember that there are some valuable stories that i never shared online in this raw format my my downfalls and my my successes which you know uh, i worked my ass off to go through and and i discovered things which unless you go through that path you don't discover it and hopefully you know these insights will uh make your life better you, know, you won't have to work your ass off as much as i did to gain those same insights and uh yeah so so listening to gary the uh definitely inspired me to to head down that road. So yeah, I think this is going to be enough. Uh if you're interested about more YouTube tips and, you know, stuff that I realized works, let me know in the comments. I'll make a specific video 
just talking about YouTube. This one was dedicated more to Gary. Uh, you know, there's a chance you're watching this, so so thank you a lot, man. I know you know that you're doing an amazing job, but but thank you from the bottom of my heart as well for for doing it. I hope I'll chip in my value as well uh, as much as you do in the future. And everyone else, go read the book. Life is awesome. Keep grinding and uh, keep questioning. Thank you.